I designed and developed all of the professional learning activities for our directors. And I was getting bored. I was like, I'm so tired of doing these two hour sessions and just doing the same thing over and over. And I realized that I really wasn't changing on the job practice. And then when I read the book and then I saw Kirkpatrick's rubric, I was like, we never get over a two. That's what I say. I say, I never get over a two. People may, because you know, everybody come and they say, Karen, this was amazing. It was so good. That was so good. And I was like, okay, that's the one, right? Then they say, um, after they say it's so good, they say, oh, I really learned something today. But then that's it. I don't see you implementing it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see you changing your on the job practice and I don't even, we can't even track the results. And so I was like, no, something has to change where they can really begin to really invest their learning into their job. Anytime I see a theory, a concept, a model, I do what most adults do, what all of us probably naturally do. And I try to relate it back to something else I know, back to something that I can contextualize it in. And over this 20 year plus career in the business, I had come across multiple theories and models and ways of working. And all of them I believed should fit together, but there were still these gaping holes. Because I think too often in learning and development, we tend to take one theory, one concept, and we think, all right, let's apply that. Yep, that's the one we're gonna go with. But I kept asking this question of why can't we combine these and look at them more holistically, taking the best parts of every single theory that we see. And that, that's where I get back to modern learning. That is what the LCD model did for me. So thank you, Crystal and Lisa, because what this did was it took all of those concepts, all of those theories and said, no, 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 no. These all fit together. What you have been thinking about, Jess, what is these big gaps? I don't know how you all got in my head, but you went, no, 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 you're on the right track. You can put them all together. And in fact, you should if you want to be even more impactful. So that is where the learning cluster design um, method came and became really impactful for me, why I connected to it so quickly. It gave me this framework and this language to start talking about all of these things that I, that had been swimming, but I didn't have a way to connect them. I stumbled across the book somewhere. I don't even remember where I saw it originally, but I ordered the book from Amazon and got it in like two days. And I, I was excited about it. So I picked it up one night about 11 o'clock at night just to read the introduction of the book. And I stayed up until three or four o'clock in the morning reading the book from cover to cover because it addressed everything that my team had been wrestling with for months in terms of how to move from a traditional classroom style of training to something that was more for everyone and really hit the mark for what our customers were asking us for, as well as what we felt like we needed to deliver to our customers. We just couldn't figure out how to put it all together. So I read the book from cover to cover in about four or five hours in the middle of the night, which means it was pretty good. And then um, recommended it to my manager. We read it as a team, as a book club. I read it again on my own cover to cover, just really obsessed with the model. And so we've been trying to apply it on our own for about a year and a half now, I would say. You know, for me, the personas and then the clusters really put the learning back into the learner's hands. And if you think back to what we all know and what you learn when we learn how to train people and you look at, you know, andragogy and really going back into adult learning theory, you know, really giving people autonomy over their learning is one of those fundamental things that we always learn. And the model does that, right? It gives us that. So we, we talk about it, oh, put learners in control of their own learning, but we never create anything to actually do it. it it's not just your traditional, like, sit in a classroom session, learn, and then be done. So it is, you know, like they say all the time, like beyond one and done, which I think for us right now, that's where we are. But I think that there's so much more potential with, you know, using the model, having assets in and around and surrounding the learners. And I think it'll just make it our, our learning program at Majestic just a lot more effective.
what I like about LCD is I like that it's a really good, clear model. And you might have noticed that I'm, as I said, I'm a physicist by training. I really appreciate things that take something complicated and make it simple for people. And this is a quote. I love this quote. A couple of people have heard me say this one before. The simplicity on the far side of complexity is, is what I'm looking for, right? It's like, yes, I know things are complicated, but what I need is the simple version that doesn't dumb it down, that actually captures the whole thing, right? And so for me, LCD is a bit like Newton's laws of motion. It, it summarizes everything you need to know in a nice tight little package, and then you can apply it, right? My team, the, the marketing team I work with, I don't, I'm not a manager. I have a manager and I have coworkers. So I influence and suggest and guide, but everybody in my team that I work with gets the idea and we're actually using these ideas in our own team as well. So that's really good. The LCD model is a really unique perspective. And I think the fact that it works well together with existing tools and models is a really big plus to how it works because it doesn't mean that you have to completely scrap everything that you already know or have been working with in order to implement it. You get to still work with the processes and methodologies that you've worked with in the past. It became something because of that model. That was the source of the entire development of the program Um, because we really started with nothing. Um, We started with uh, some some audacious ideas and, and hopes that that was really it. And so it really was a, the foundational piece that we needed to really build upon. 